Welcome to a new episode of WUM Weekly. Digify Africa is a youth-led organization that is at the forefront of shaping Africa's digital future. They created three WhatsApp chatbots to educate young Africans on three different topics. One, basic digital literacy, two, internet safety, and three, Facebook digital marketing. Three different chatbot characters lead the chats and deliver knowledge in the form of links, videos, or even interactive quizzes and study groups. One of these chatbots has already won several awards, including the new Gen Award for Most Innovative Learning App. From the Messenger People Studio in the heart of Munich, our Kata is welcoming you today. Hello from the Messenger People Studio in Munich. Uh, yeah, due to the fact that we have an international guest today, I start in English and welcome you all to our next Womb Weekly episode. Our best case today is very impressive, as we heard in the introduction. They had launched three chatbots and they run very successfully and they got already awarded. So I'm very happy to um, ask today all my questions and learn all the details about this successful program. And for that, I invited Gavin Wheely, the CEO and founder of Digify Africa. So welcome, Gavin. Hi, Gavin. Hi. Sorry. Here Short I delay am. we had. <laughs> no problem. So welcome uh, you, you on the Boom Weekly stage. We are very happy to have you here. Maybe as a start, say a few words about your person and about Digify Africa. Yeah, well, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm Gavin Wheel. I'm the founder of Digify Africa. I'm speaking to you from Cape Town. And uh, I've been running this company for 10 years uh, since moving from the UK to South Africa. And we work across the continent. Uh, our, our primary focus is to try and help young people develop their digital skills and gain employment and grow businesses in the digital economy um, and a big part of that is is trying to find ways to de deliver learning to young people across the continent um, in ways that are kind of relevant for them and their situations okay what is your uh what are your challenges for for yeah getting to the people and yeah educating them yeah, I mean, so for, for most of the last 10 years, uh, our training has happened face to face. Um, you know, we've run all kinds of programs from three month boot camps that virtually guarantee participants a job through to shorter, you know, one day and half day trainings that start giving you a bit of knowledge about digital skills, um, which, which, you know, have reached many, many thousands of, of people we've trained over hundred thousand young people in those programs um <clears throat> and clearly the fact that you know we've had to take a, a, a physical training approach you know will suggest to you that on this continent really there's no substitute for actually getting in front of learners you know getting into a classroom and having that physical contact and the the you know the rise of e-learning in in much of the world uh it has not been able to happen here in the same way because uh, it's a mobile first continent um, you know most people do not have desktop computers or laptops and the cost of data is very very high especially here in south africa um, it's a little lower in kenya and some of the other countries um, but proportionate to sort of the levels of income especially for low income people it means that data is a very expensive commodity so when it comes to e-learning and particularly of course in the last two years with covid making virtual learning and e-learning even more important at every level of education uh, we have had to think outside the box about how we uh, you know how we communicate to learners how we get learning across to to people with very limited access to data or devices and what kind of channels did you look into to find the right communication channel? 
So we've been, obviously, we've had digital presences for a while. Um, you know, our starting point was really social media in general. So we've, we, we liked the idea of using social media for learning because we want to use platforms where the learners are already present, you know, because even downloading an app uh, or visiting a, a website is a barrier to entry. So if you can try and bring the learning into spaces where people are already there, then you're lower, lowering the barrier to access. Um, but I think we found also, you know, even with platforms as, as widespread as Facebook, which, you know, I think was the biggest social network or is the biggest social network in terms of users on this continent, uh, um, uh, and Twitter, you know, perhaps even less users, you know, they're still very exclusive in terms of um, the, the kind of users who can access them and spend time there. But WhatsApp is a different story. You know, WhatsApp is, is, is much more ubiquitous. Um, it's very widely used and it, and it is a kind of day-to-day -day tool that people are familiar with. And you don't need to train people how to use it um you know they're already there and and it's it's the the platform that is is most widely used on a day-to-day -day basis even by people with very limited means so um that's why we decided you know a, about two to three years ago that we really wanted to explore how you could deliver learning entirely within the whatsapp environment we we had used whatsapp as part of our learning programs before you know, because it's a great tool that many, many people are using for learner support and managing groups of learners and classroom, you know, managing classrooms, etc. But I think we wanted to go further than that and see how how could we actually deliver whole courses, uh, whole e-learning experiences within the WhatsApp environment. When I saw your first project, um, I saw one of your chatbots, and then I discovered that you already have three chatbots. Um, so why and what distinguished them? <clears throat> Is it the topic or the target group or, yeah, why do you have three of them? <laughs> yeah, it's a good question. I think we're, in some ways we're still f figuring that that out in terms of long term is that is that the best approach um but so far they've been built around specific audiences and specific content and i think that is important because one thing we've learned very quickly is and it sounds obvious to say it but that you know the content and audience fit needs to be very close because otherwise the adoption is going to be very low um, so if you're marketing, our first chatbot was called No Lady, uh, which we developed in partnership with Meta. And it was, um, you know, it was a digital marketing, a Facebook digital marketing training uh, for entrepreneurs, early stage entrepreneurs and, and sort of entrepreneurs across Africa. Um, and we, you know, we had quite a good marketing campaign around it, supported by Meta. Um, but I think we, we, we realized that you know, many of the people interested in it, the content probably wasn't relevant for them. So they were signing up out of interest and then just dropping off. So the drop off rates were, were, were reasonably high. But the, the, two, bot, the two bots we've developed since, um, you know, have, have also had very specific audiences. One uh, is called Kitso, and that's aimed at teachers um, and uh, is, is helping teachers understand internet safety and online resilience so that they can teach learners in schools how to stay safe online um, and the third one we've built is is the digital literacy bot lisedi um, which is uh which is also getting very very good traction as is kitso now um you know with millions and millions of messages um, and i think there we've found you know a better balance of the fit between the marketing funnel the content, um, the partnerships. So that marketing funnel is very, very crucial in terms of the audience, of course. Um, and therefore, you know, we're getting really, really great traction. So much higher numbers of engagement and, and also higher numbers of completion of, of the course material. So, so far that's been our sort of hypothesis is that 
different bots can serve you know very specific audiences um but i think next year you'll see us probably expanding those chatbots uh into to, to add content um for for those audiences so more content for teachers more content for people who have learned a bit of digital literacy and, and now want to learn more Okay, so you're not planning a new chatbot, but but you're planning to invest more content and to yeah, make your target group you already choose more, yeah, better satisfaction about what they can learn via the chatbot. Yeah, I think we see it as a <clears throat> yes, an ongoing kind of content delivery channel um, for specific audiences. Um, and the Kidso bot is very specific in that it's it's educators and teachers in South Africa, um, but of course there's 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 lots of different content and and lots of different partners who who may be interested in that channel given mm -hmm. how much uh, sort of traction we've had. And then Lesedi is is more of our own bot in a way for Digify and our own programs. Um, so I think that the longer term ambition there is to see how we can add more advanced um skills you know so you can start with digital literacy which is very very basic content you know it's aimed at really first time users of the internet and uh you know because that is a that is an issue here um people just learning how to use their phones for banking and accessing government services and so on and where does all this knowledge come from that the bots impart is it created by you or are you working with a database or? You mean in terms of the content, the learning content? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we create it um, with Naledi. It was it was based on um, and, and with Kidso, in fact, it, it was based on, um, you know, content we work with in partnership with Meta for the programs we deliver um, in other ways. So, you know, we do run the, some of the more traditional kind of virtual webinars and offline training where we can, COVID allowing. So the content for those did exist in those formats. Um, Lesedi was something that we we did just create from scratch. And I think the really the you know the tech side of it is 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 fairly straightforward in some ways. Um, the the really hard part is the content is is how to curate and mix up the different media types and make it engaging and try and sort of maximize the user experience given the sort of limitations of, of the WhatsApp interface. But I'm also interested in how you, you're you running the bots or how did you technically set up the chatbots? Because I think our audience always would think that is the big thing, but it's good that you say it's more important to, yeah, to get the right content in the right formats uh, for the audience. Well, I think for what we're doing, that's true. Um, you know, but there's obviously a lot of bots out there and 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 in our space, you know, I guess in the in the impact social impact space, there's a lot of amazing work being done with chatbots. Um, you know, there's companies like Prekel and and Turn IO here in South Africa who are really doing some incredible things and trying to get lots of uh, uh, organizations to be able to build their own in a very easy fashion. Um, but then we've worked with a, a company called Texas here, who are a sort of third party um, you know, developer who've who've essentially built the built the system that's allowed us to kind of create our chatbots. Um, so I think there's there's you know there's third parties who are out there solving the problem you you highlight for us, for those of us who are not dev companies you know and, and 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 don't want to be dev companies um where we can really just come in and with some technical knowledge look at well how can we push this technology as far as we can because i think one of the things we have been proud to do is that you know we ha we have with our tech partners texas we've been able to uh, create sort of custom features like quiz builders and leaderboards and things like that, you know, that which is really enhancing the, the user experience. Um, so we're trying to push push it as much as possible, um, but we're, 
whoever's building that stuff is is not in our our team <laughs> they're building it for us okay but how was um no, what is the handling now for you? So, so your partner set up the chatbot tool or the chatbot, and then the content had to yeah get into the chatbot. Did you do this? And how how are you handling the chatbot today? Is it running by itself now, or do you have to do something on a daily basis with the chatbots? No, so we still manage and and run the chatbots, and and yeah, we you know we had to kind of essentially create it from scratch using their tools I, I suppose the best way to describe it is you know that they've created a content management system for building chatbots which which you know we can use at the back end so almost like a, yeah, a wordpress for chatbots um so we've i guess we we've, we've mastered those two or our team has mastered those those tools um and we still manage you know in partnership with our tech partners so obviously, if there's an outage, uh, they have to work very hard in the background. Uh, we've had a couple of those recently, unfortunately, because of huge amounts of messages being sent, um, which is, I guess, a good problem to have. But um, so we're very much working in partnership with them, yeah, to to kind of manage those kind of things and fix bugs, etc. Okay. What does the chatbots accomplish for the young adults and for you as an in initiative? So for us, it's about scaling the access to our learning programs. That's the first reason that we wanted to do this. Um, you know, because of what we spoke about at the beginning, uh, getting this learning out virtually or digitally or on, on, on an electronic platform is very, very hard because of these, you know, these limitations we discussed. Um, so that's the first objective for us. If we could make this, you know, make our programs available and enjoyable and impactful in terms of learning uh, within the, the chatbot environment, as we have been doing, then, you know, the possibility to scale the impact is obviously huge because once these chatbots are built, they can reach millions and millions of people in theory. Um, so we we do feel like we've only scratched the surface in some ways. You know, number one, we really want to do more research um, and insight into the learning experience and the value of the learning experience and make sure that, you know, going through and completing one of our courses in the chatbots is you, that you are learning, you're learning what is intended and that's it's a valuable and enjoyable experience. So I, I can't say that we've, I don't feel like we've yet 100% proved that, you know, I think we're, we're in the early stages. And then, you know, secondly would be assuming we can do that to an extent where we're very happy, which we believe we will, then uh, it's about getting all the other content from our programs you know, uh, into the, the chatbot environment. So that, so as much content as possible is accessible. But of course, we do expect maybe some limitations uh, if we're getting into very advanced content or certain types of teaching and learning that doesn't quite fit within the chatbot. You know, I think we have our eyes open to that, that it may not be this sort of solution for all kinds of education. It may it may have its role to play, and of course, it it will have its role as a blended tool. So as a as a way of leading into, you know, other educational experiences, whether that's virtual seminars or uh, webinars or you know even offline learning. When when we get back to that, if we get back to that, hopefully. You said that you want to measure a bit more how how it really helps if the people use the chatbot. Um, do you already have thoughts how to measure this or how to get insights on this topic? And do you already have KPIs um, or you had KPIs to measure what of the chatbot is most successful? Yeah, we, we do have KPIs and obviously the advantage of this approach is that, you know, that we get this kind of instant feedback of, of data in real time. Um, but I think it's at the moment, it's more about engagement than learning. 
you know, we can we can show the engagement. And so the key metrics to begin with have been, you know, how many people have begun a course, uh, how many topics have they completed and who's completed. And then if you complete, obviously, the survey and the feedback of the experience, um, that's the kind of data we have so far. Um, but I think what we what we don't yet have um, is the kind of deeper understanding of you know the value of these experiences in an educational sense um you know and and, and the value of the learning um I, I think we're too early we we just haven't got that far yet um you know we naledi launched uh, at the uh, at the end of 2020 so we've really been only doing this for a full year so far it's ha a lot has happened in that year <laughs> Um, but we're still we're still figuring a few things out. Do you have some numbers for our audience to get a feeling how many interactions or registrations you had with, for example, a lady, or yeah, how many particip participants received a certificate? Because I read that you can yeah can get a certificate at the end of uh, one of the chatbot courses. Yeah, so, um, well, Naledi, the, the numbers were uh, a, a little lower, um, but in total, so far, um, uh, sorry, I'm just trying to bring up the latest graphic that I've, I've got around this. Um, we had over 20 million messages sent on our chatbots, um, and uh, quite a lot of this traffic or, or this interaction has been happening um, in the last couple of months. Uh, okay. So we've had a, a real spike in activity. Um, I mean, last, so Lesedi, for example, uh, has uh, 11,000 registrations overall, 25,000 topics completed, and uh, almost 2,000 students have completed. Um, Kitso, Almost 10 million messages sent on Kitso, so it's actually our biggest, um, with 30,000 registrations, 100,000 topics completed, and 10,000 completing students. Um, and then the lady, well, the lady is actually not, I mean, the lady's concluded, so it's, it's not live at the moment. So those are the latest on the two that we, we still have running. Yeah. And how did you promote the chatbots? Because you, you, yeah, you generated a lot of users, but how did the users know about this offer? So, um, well, Lesedi, I, I have to admit, is it's a bit of a mystery to us um, <laughs> because we're doing, we're, we don't quite know where all that traffic is coming from. We we are marketing that ourselves through our own social channels. Um, and, uh, yeah, we haven't quite got our heads around exactly what is doing the heavy lifting there. Kitso is a lot more clear why that has, um, you know, got, gone so well in terms of numbers. And that's because we started a partnership with the government, at the Department of Basic Education, and they have supported us in um, sending information about Kitso out to teachers all over the country mm -hmm. so that has been incredible you know and i think that just shows that building these things is not enough you really really need a, either a very strong mar targeted marketing funnel or a really good partnership um yeah to tap into those you know volume of users now we are already going into my last question because you you already gave the tip that it's not enough to create a good chatbot. What would you advise someone to do if they wanted to set up a similar project? What are your learnings maybe also? Um, I think we have learned that obviously you just have to test and tinker and fail. I mean, I'm sure that's a, 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 a lesson that a lot of people in the tech world know, but um, we did give ourselves permission to do that. Um, and, you know, th there were two, there was a prototype and then there was an early pilot before the lady um, where we learned a lot of, a lot of mistakes um, ar ar around this. Um, I think 
you know, to, to build in that continuous process of understanding your what your users are doing and why they're dropping out and what, what they find valuable, um, you know, that, that's been essential for us of understanding like where, where are people falling down? Where are people dropping off um, and helping, you know, the data and the constant monitoring of the data around that has allowed us to figure out and make, make decisions. Um, and I think also just, I don't know, not sort of for us, I think it's, it's being not constrained by what you expect a chatbot to be able to do. Um, you know, I think we, we've managed to push the envelope on that a little bit and, 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 and make, make the, the functionality that WhatsApp have work a bit harder, um, than it usually does, you know, cause it's actually quite versatile when you really get creative with it. Um, and we still feel like we can do a lot more with it as well. I mean, the, ultimately the vision is, can we turn WhatsApp into a learning management system that organizations can use um, to manage their, you know, if you're a school or a university, can you use it as a tool to manage your whole community? Um, we think it's possible and that's the next level for us. Sounds like a great next level. I'm interested a bit more in the thing that you said you did in uh, cooperation with the government. Was it hard to convince them to do such an innovative <clears throat> way to educate teachers, especially? Um, yes, it was difficult. <laughs> um, it's, it, it's, it tends to be difficult um you know just the the pace of the of decision making you sometimes get from the government um but um i think that they're seeing the benefit now um and i think they're looking they're looking for solutions like this that 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 make sense and i think this one's maybe a little bit easier for them to adopt because all they really need to do in terms of communicating this is is pass on you know the number and then people yeah. can just sign up and and then they're off and away so it's quite an easy entry point but yeah i think that government partnership is going to be really crucial going forward and um i hope we can extend it to other areas of of the educational spectrum okay yeah that was my last question let's see what the audience wants to know do you send the users push notifications? Yes, we do. Um, not too much because obviously, you know, there is a process behind that and there are rules around how you can do it. So we, we do it sparingly. Um, and, uh, uh, but it, but it has been very, very critical in certain, certain instances to, um, you know, for example, like when we had a, issue with the bot we wanted to speak to everyone and and you know just get a message across um and i think we 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 use it for things like that mainly yeah it's not something you can rely on as a sort of marketing tool i don't think so you're not using them to re-engage for example people who stopped engaging with the bot well, I, I suppose it's, yeah, what do you mean by push notifications? Because, you know, it's an interactive chatbot and mm -hmm. it does, once you're opted in and signed in, it of course is, there's a back and forth going on. I thought the question more meant, you know, broadcast messages of, yeah. I was just thinking in this way that you saw, because you said you, you looked into the da data quite good and you looked when, when the people checked out or stopped interacting with the chatbot. So my question was, if you have like a time frame when you say when he didn't interact with the chatbot three days, then he gets a push notification who says, hey, look into the chatbot. And, and Right, right, right. Well, one way we've been trying to do that is... Uh, in parallel um, has been having groups, you know, groups of learn Facebook group, uh, sorry, WhatsApp groups on the side, um, which people who are going through the course uh, are, are part of as well. And so you can kind of have a, a community management strategy there. And that's that's worked quite well in the past of getting learners to finish, um, finish programs. 
but the bot itself does give you little prompts um along the way yeah okay so the next question do you measure the user satisfaction or any feedback yeah we already had that topic a bit and you're trying to right we're trying to yeah we could probably do a, a little better on that uh, going forward i think but do you already do something like surveys after they they yeah fulfilled the yeah whole we do we do process? do surveys but i think what we haven't managed to capture for example is surveys of people who gave up halfway or you know yeah. did one topic and, and dropped out so that would be useful data to have as well okay okay another question how many people were involved in the setup of the project well uh quite a lot in the end <laughs> i mean we have a core team of sort of four four people in the team including myself um but then there's a whole network of uh of freelancers as well supporting and and most of those are really on the content side um you know and, and that's not even to mention this you know our tech partners who built the the you know the application the cms for for whatsapp so um yeah a lot of our cost has gone in the the kind of content specialists we need copywriters art directors voice note recorders testers etc etc to, to make sure the content's all right how long how long did it take that you could start with a chatbot so how long was the process generating the content for first step well we're getting quicker um the first one took us about four or five months i think but lesedi was up and running in six weeks okay wow yeah. wow good progress i would say yeah here a question another question where does your funding come from well um i think i've mentioned meta uh the the company formerly known as facebook um they are uh, they've been our major partner in the development of of our chatbot so far and um, we also won a grant from whatsapp as part of their chat for impact program they ran for 10 organizations around the world um and now we're we're actively out seeking funding to do more next year yeah so good luck with this i would say i wish you all the best for the future projects and i i i will yeah i will look at you and see what is further coming up because it seems to be going very interesting uh, the next years um that was the last question because Zuren put us together Thanks, Gavin, for all your time and all your insights. And yeah, good luck with the, with the future project. Thanks for having me. And it's great to be working with you guys on this. Thanks, too. And now to the audience. Thanks a lot for listening our Womb Weekly episode. This one was the last for this year, but we are going to continue our Womb Weekly next year, of course. And if you want to know which talks are scheduled, please check our website or follow our Messenger People social media chan channels. There we will, of course, push out as soon as we have new talks scheduled. And of course, it's our last talk. It's December. And of course, I'm saying goodbye with wishing you all happy Christmas. See you next year.